Welcome back, everyone. Uh, the next panel discussion is on forward-looking cybersecurity and the organization. This will be moderated by Srihari Adurthi, co-founder and CRO, that is Chief Risk Officer Funds Corner, Mr. Shailendra Kothavle, Chief Risk and Compliance Officer Adit Birla Group, Mr. Dominic Vijay Kumar, Deputy Vice President and Head IT and Security at Art Housing Finance India Limited, and Mr. Kunan Karpal, Chief Risk Officer at Hinduja Leyland Finance Limited. Thank you, all the panelists. Over to you, Mr. Srihari Adarthi. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, welcome to the panel discussion on uh, uh, forward-looking uh, cyber secrecy and the organization. Uh, this is the second ELITS BFSI Security Summit 2020. And uh, we all know due to the current uh, COVID challenges, we are doing this virtually. So, I have with me uh, three other friends from the industry who are also part of this panel. So uh, uh, we will uh, we'll, we'll start with a round of introductions from uh, Mr. Shalin. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, compliments for, to you for joining this session. Uh, I think in this virtual world, uh, keeping your zest for learning uh, is a very good thing. And I think we should give a pat on our back uh, for this. Even we are learning in this process by having this discussion within ourselves. You see all of them are from different sectors. So I think uh, I look to learn forward from it. I am the Chief Compliance and Chief Risk Officer of uh, Aditya Birla Sun Life Insurance. Uh, it's written Aditya Birla Group, but I'm part of uh, Aditya Birla Sun Life Insurance uh, organization. And it's financial services looking into life insurance. I'm quite passionate about uh, speaking at forums, sharing my thoughts, and look forward to a meaningful interaction. Uh, and uh, of course, my uh, role in this would be CRO. How do I interact with my CISO, who's part of my team in terms of implementing solutions? Uh, how do we ensure the organization is tied together? And how do I play my role as a leadership team member in terms of uh, taking an approval from the board or implementing it in the organization culture? Uh, so over to you, uh, Kunal. Yeah, hi everybody. I'm Kunal Katpal. I'm the Chief Risk Officer uh, with Hinduja Leyland Finance. Uh, you know, uh, look forward to sharing my views in the uh, panel. You know, as a risk officer, you know, one of the key areas for us is to you know have identification of risk early as early as possible. You know, so happy to share my thoughts on some of the topics uh, which which you know are in the last six, eight months become one of the key discussion areas, you know, because a lot of things have been pre pawned when it comes to cyber security and, uh, you know, information security as, as, as one may want to perceive it. And, uh, you know, uh, it's also a good opportunity to connect with the uh, folks across the industry to learn, you know, what, what they have been implementing and, you know, what, uh, uh, you know, are the best practices which are going on. Over to you, Dominic. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dominic. Um, I work for a housing finance company. Uh, I handle the security and uh, basically handle both activities. Uh, I had IT plus uh, security is part of us. We are a seven year old company uh, based out of Gurugam. We are concentrated more on the affordable housing segment operating on the northern and the western part of India. And uh, I'm happy to join this panel with uh, the industry experts to share uh, whatever I could uh, within my lab. Uh, learnings in the past um, years of experience in IT when it comes to security and uh, the kind of challenges we face in our uh, businesses and happy to learn from learn and listen to our fellow panelists also thank you yeah thanks Dominic uh, 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 my name is uh, Srihari Adutti I am the co-founder of uh, of a, of a lending startup called Funds Corner. Funds Corner is primarily engaged in the business of supply chain finance. So we have been active for past uh, four, four and a half years. Uh, and uh, we have tried to bring in a lot of uh, uh, innovations by use of core technology and different credit products uh, in the last four years. Uh, COVID, uh, of course, is uh, brought in both a challenge and an opportunity to Relook at our whole business model and see how best the the tech aspects of it uh, can be used. And uh, I'm actually personally I'm very happy 
uh, that this uh, point of inflection has come in the in the lending business in India because uh, we have been trying to push forward for a lot of uh, tech aspects with the traditional business to move into a tech mode but uh, not been very successful but uh, we have achieved quite in roads in last six months so as part of this panel i'll i'll be uh, looking forward to learn from all of you uh, and also give my views on how uh, the it intervention can actually speed up the whole business processing and also the banking and both banking and uh, the uh, financial services sector evolves both in insurance savings or in lending uh, how it evolves into a completely new model wherein more uh, tech can be used and uh, the cost and can be reduced and risks of course can be covered so the reason why i am part of this panel is uh, even though i am not i am a non tech guy is because being a small company the uh, the cyber security etc still, still falls under the risk domain so that's how it is so yeah uh, uh, so i will just uh, that's my introduction so we will move on now to the uh, discussion part uh, uh, so there is uh, today we have about four to five agenda topics uh, which we can look forward to so you know uh, one thing which has definitely uh, uh, change the whole business scenario and the perspective of everybody in the both financial sector and uh, uh, in, in many other sectors is the how you manage your uh, how you manage your uh, IT and uh, what is to, to put it in a larger perspective what is your cyber management policy so. Uh, uh, Kunal, can you since you come from a very large uh, large uh, uh, NBFC and uh, you guys have been in the past also pioneer in implementing a lot of uh, credit products and IT related stuff, uh, maybe you can uh, quickly uh, give your view to us as to uh, how do you think that the you know the overall uh, impact of COVID uh, on uh, on the cyber management internally while it was already always there as it uh, uh, been uh, more become more strategic at your place now that uh, the whole cyber management part. Yeah, okay, you know? yeah, thank you so much. Like you uh, rightly mentioned, you know, cyber security and information security uh, were always a, a key component of the financial services industry. You know, the only change that I would uh, think that COVID has made is, you know, the the adoption of e-commerce and digital financial services has been accelerated uh, you know uh, in, in the country and uh, but at the same time you know it brings uh, a lot of rise to uh, cyber frauds and which obviously means uh, you know there has to be a necessary multi-level awareness which has to be created across the uh, organization you know if you see uh, today Digital transformation is, is the is a key word that you know we are listening all across, and uh, you know while digital transformation is helping a lot of the financial companies because you know we are coming up with new and uh, you know uh, new ways of uh, decisioning our customers you know by building uh, models and you know uh, by creating a lot of machine learning uh, based uh, scenarios. You know, but at the same time, what what uh, this brings along with it is, are the challenges which are related to reputation of an organization. So, uh, you know, having said that, uh, you know, COVID-19, I would say, is placing greater pressure uh, on us to improve our technical capabilities. At the same time, you know, when we are more vulnerable to cyber attacks, because, you know, more number of transactions, more number of interactions are now happening on the uh, machine learning platform. Uh, con therefore, you know, if we if we just see the way uh, cyber crime, you know, in the uh, in, from an Indian context, there is there are around 66 percent of Indian organizations which have suffered at least uh, one data breach after shifting to remote working model, and this is you know based on this global survey done by. Uh, uh, Barracuda networks, and you know, uh, it, it it clearly highlights that you know while 
information and cyber security uh, was a key area for uh, of, of concern to the industries but with the further flowing of further emphasis on more data based uh, activities which are carried on you know the, even the uh, cyber crime uh, or rather cyber criminals if i want to say that you know they have also become even more active you know now that uh, more information is available on the data pipeline uh, things are more vulnerable so uh, therefore just to conclude while it need of an hour to uh, you know invest in a uh, lot of our business model or financial models which are based on data and and, and uh, you know a lot of data services are being used otherwise to have connectivity with our branches and connectivity with the customers but at the same time you know all all this uh, accelerated uh, growth in the uh, digital transformation world has also brought in a lot of information or cyber security risks so as an organization what we been continuously doing you know is is creating the awareness across the board also creating awareness campaigns with our customers uh, and finally you know uh, continuously testing our information and cyber security controls which are which are being established in the uh, in the company yeah very interesting perspective uh, kunal uh, uh, i think uh, i i fully agree with you that uh, while it's uh, it's very exciting to get into the new tech phase it also brings with uh, a lot of challenges so i will now straight shoot to dominic who is uh, who is in uh, uh, i have heard him on many forums and been uh, tracking his views from <coughs> all for years now and we'll be happy to hear his views on the security part particularly on the cyber management because we all know that a lot of uh, every second uh, mail uh, we get is from uh, some vendor who is talking about new features of technology etc but uh, i think uh, we all know that uh, it's it's once you get into it you are into it and so security is paramount so dominic please enlighten us with your views on this um thanks sir. Uh, just, just, uh, since I come from a housing finance background, you know, when I look at my business as such, uh, uh, where uh, data plays a very, very crucial role for us, data, the KYC of the customers, the property documents, what we hold, mm-hmm. and other than the customer uh, in-house data also. So we have huge chunk of data. So now, uh, how are we going to secure this data? The, initially, it was all uh, before COVID. When I look at pre, uh, post uh, pre COVID, pre COVID, everything was uh, it was just an activity. You know, you take a backup, run the show, and you do a BCP DR activity and keep things moving. Endpoint security is updated, patches are updated, and you know, at any point of time, uh, when you say uh, uh, systems are ready, systems are readily available to us. But it it was more like a, a well planned activity. But post COVID, that is the when the lockdown happened. That was the one which actually made us to understand and find out what are the gaps. We all were in the very comfortable zone, saying that everything is working, and we are installed, we are installed, DMARC, we are installed. But technically speaking, how much of it we had measured it? Was it successful in all kinds of kind of network, all kinds of area, the remoteness of remote location, working on multiple users simultaneously, working on the load factor? All nothing was nothing was being measured. Everything was set. Every we all were happy. Uh, audits were going on, whether it's a regulatory audit, internal audit, or external audit. Everything was going on, and we used to produce reports and all those things. But the time the lockdown happened, actual scenario uh, place. We were not in a position of understanding how are you going to run the call center, which is very very crucial for us from a housing finance point of view. If I had to do my collections, I have to do a pre EMI calling to all my customers. Now, how are you going to shift your call center to the users who are working? at home and when these users are working at home and what kind of connectivity they are using are they using their phone hotspot or they are using a broadband connectivity so these are the challenges which we started this is more from the operational point of view which we started facing it which 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 covid taught us what is an alternate option then we had to start testing it on the vpn we were i mean technically speaking it was uh, surprising for us to see that you know call center also can work on a vpn technology through a vpn but with a little bit of judge and depending on the bandwidth that's the first time we tested it on all the external bandwidth till then till last three four years we were working comfortably on the lease line circuits and all those things then when you started off on the branch connectivity 
branch was not operational all the sales team were operating from their house so how secure is the systems but one thing what we did was uh, when you look at the overall cyber security or the information security plan as an um, um, we, since we come under nhb slash rbi we had very clearly as per the uh, um, socler which was way back in 6 17 uh, 17 18 we had very clearly landmark that you know every devices the end user device or you talk about the tabs or the mobile devices including laptop and desktop are secured whether it is through an endpoint security or a proper ad control user role based access were all given and all this was set and kept but it was not tested actually these post uh, once the lockdown happened the last 6 to 8 months we had really uh, felt that you know system there are a lot of background systems had to be upgraded we had seen that the number of hits coming onto our data center the number of users accessing at different different speeds of network that how during when you are accessing it from a different multiple points how are you going to secure them what are the kind of connectivity we going to use today you find a lot of products available in the market n number of products are available but, but which product is going to be suitable for it so now what we are doing is we are setting up a base saying that this set of users should have this kind of connectivity this set of users should have this and we are started evaluating the product we are not buying all the product which is coming in the market we want to see what kind of product is going to suit my business how long it's going to help me out in setting up things without compromising on the compliance the cyber security or the policies what we are implemented and kept for housing finance company these are the very very important things are presently i think many of us also will agree to that because customer data is crucial for us any breach on my customer data we are we have to just shut down our um, store and keep walking off that is very very crucial for us especially when it come because we a customer who's with us he is with us for tech 15 to 20 years time so it is my duty to secure his systems and keep it without compromising and at the same time i have to see there is no kind of external attack or internal attack espionage on my network where it hampers my business which can be a financial loss reputational loss whether it can be a phishing attack mailing attack so these are certain things you know which real it was a eye opener for us basically and now what we have done is we have made a very good clear plan and we gradually phase wise manner we are trying to find out the loopholes we have brought in a good auditor to do start doing information security audit and finding out and on that basis we will be taking actions so these are certain things which cyber uh, covid post covid cyber man i can say it is not only cyber man it's a overall over um, overhauling of the complete information security as well as the cyber security and the operational thing tomorrow if something goes on what how how are you going to handle this kind of activities you know there are few things which i could feel yeah so primarily uh, as i understand from you primarily two things one is like the past uh, capabilities of your have been tested and now yeah. Are new capabilities to be built, so yes. so we, we, yeah, we come to the budget part a little later because yeah, yeah. all the huge budgetary implications, uh, and we understand as a, a small startup, we understand this very well, and that's why we are we are also doing a small bit of from our side on the on, on the security part. Sharin, uh, coming to you, uh, 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 since Aditya Billa overall is a large uh, group and. Uh, and the, you have been in insurance space for quite some time. In fact, uh, when I started long back to my career uh, in a small way in insurance, so the first company I it was started interacting, and you have been innovative in a lot of tech aspects from those days itself. So, what's your view on how? Uh, I'm sure you guys have already got a cyber strategy in place. Yeah. So. Uh... So we are ISO 27001 and uh, 22301 certified since the last, uh, I think, 8-10 years. It was important for us to have uh, an information security business continuity framework in place. One is to assure the regulator. Uh, second is to assure our customers, especially our group customers who are large corporates and who are very demanding. And the good thing is we were ahead of the curve. So even before uh, the regulator came up with regulations on cyber, we were ready with our framework and we could easily adapt and adopt to it. Also, the framework was very useful to us in a scenario like COVID. And as you can see, COVID was a black swan event. No one could have predicted uh, the implications of it. And for us sitting in India, we used to think pandemic or something of this nature may not come and hit us. So I think it's changed the world. I treat COVID as something which is a great opportunity for cyber professionals. One is because this is now a place in the sun. You have got attention. You are 
working on an area which is very critical cyber are one of the top five risk any global risk survey reports you can see and more important than the risk it also help you digitally digitally accelerate further so every organization needs a maturity to reach somewhere digitally covid got you suddenly into that maturity in six months time so suddenly in six months time everyone was basically on zoom a uh, digital mindset also shifted and it helped us uh, sell our insurance products also which mm -hmm. are very and motor we have 400 branches through digital means and not yeah. just digital it is an assisted mode but in the real sense and we could meet customer demand. so i i would treat it more as an opportunity than a risk now comes the risk part of it is i think you uh, you should always be ahead of the curve you should implement reforms so what we had in place very well immediately pushed us to adapt to a work from home not just for us but for our vendors also uh, because uh, you are as strong as you can this link you need to take care of the whole ecosystem and uh, i think if you don't have a mature framework today invest in it now uh, i don't think budgets would be an issue with the board even if they are you get very good solutions which are very agile uh, which are very uh, nimble and which you can manage it at your uh, cost or at your budgets also but what is important is the tone at the top how well do you want to and hence for that as cyber professionals you can earn your seat at the table at the boardroom if you are able to convince them so do your cba do your homework for good well and help take this opportunity to practically explain your model and let it be a bit ahead of the time because things will change very fast so i think covid is uh, in a way good for cyber professionals i can say yeah that's a very interesting perspective shailendra because uh... Uh, I think uh, I was just reading an article by Chris Skinner about how uh, why fintechs are doing so well in in UK because the the fintechs have themselves formed an association which acts as a SRO, which is a self-regulatory organization, and uh, they are proactively suggesting what are what should be. I mean, uh, we all are aware, right? Like UK is one of the first countries to uh, embrace open banking, and they are now. Uh, all the banks have opened their infra to uh, all the people and so security is a big factor over there but uh, the self sro which is created the industry body of fintechs which is created over there has set themselves they set up certain norms and rules which need to be followed for uh, to for, for a fintech to actually be called a fintech so that uh, brings to the another topic of, uh, that we are trying to uh, look at today is is about uh from from uh, from cyber management to overall evolving leadership uh, you know because uh you need to in these times uh, earlier it was fine like if you don't have a capability you can just uh, you can just uh, uh, kind of uh, pass under under the sun and uh, you can uh, you can remain unnoticed but once tech play comes uh, either you have it or you don't have it and that brings us to the another point is how good is the leadership uh, uh, or what is the evolving leadership in recent time because now the focus is more about not just about uh, you know growing business but growing business uh, both profitably and also you know uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, making it more secure uh, because a lot of data is 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 going to be on on the cloud and uh, the clouds keep uh, flowing with the wind and uh, it can go to any territory so chandra i like in come back to you because aditya birla is a pioneer in a lot of uh, leadership uh, areas and you uh, as a group you internally have a strong leadership practices and it will be good to hear from you then uh, we can uh, understand as to how uh, how the leadership is evolving in these times, particular focus on the BFSI sector. Yeah, what do you uh, What is the question be in terms of leadership evolving on the cyber front or is it on an overall basis? Could you just 
clarify that? Overall, uh, since it's in the context of BFSI, so there has to be some elements of, of course, uh, leadership is leadership, but some elements of how you can, uh, how do you see that certain leadership principle needs to evolve now? The time is imminent. I mean, it, the time for those principles have come. So I think COVID uh, and even otherwise, uh, the disruptions which are happening in the ecosystem, it has taught us that uh, uh, you cannot have a static operating model. It needs to keep on evolving uh, uh, time and again. And uh, that's one. The second is customer has become more now core to your entire uh, journey. And customer, uh, 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 I think obsession is something which is very uh, important and very critical because uh, the insurance products or any product, now financial product is available to the customer at a touch of a button. You just need to Google stuff up. So what are you there for? I think uh, you need to bring that out very well. And that's where the brand information risk becomes very important. So you need to both zoom in and zoom out. You cannot have a small reputation and snowball into big thing. And uh, I think that's why situational leadership Leadership, which is flexible, but which is based on core values is very mm -hmm. important because customers understand that. And uh, uh, digitization is very important, but more than digitization, I think it is the mindset of your distributors, of your employees, uh, and with the interest of customers at the base. Even if you digitize your processes, but you are not warm in your approach, it is not good. So you need to be empathetic. You need so the basic human values still stay, uh, uh, and with it, uh, a core uh, analytics, digitization, and a fine understanding of the customer and the evolving needs. So it is not based on what product you have, but what product the customer wants. And I think your cyber or your other strategies need to be built around the operating model. They cannot be static by itself. And hence, as the model changes, the cyber guy needs to, the CISO needs to understand business so that they can evolve it according to that. Because that's how your applications are going to get evolved. That's how your solutions are going to get it. Right, right. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, point on the, on, on how the, your security actually uh, drives the tech infra. It's not the other way like it used to be earlier because now everything is going to be on on in, uh, on infra. So uh, uh, Kunal, I think uh, from uh, a, again uh, one big group which is the Hindija group, which is also you already have a, 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 a manufacturing setup under you. Then you have services sector uh, setup under you. So I'm sure. At the organizational level and at also at the Indija Leela and Finance level, there must be a lot of changes or initiatives that's being brought through because of these times. Since uh, as much as they are challenging times, these are also exciting times for the leaders to evolve. So uh, we'll be happy to hear your views on this and how COVID has brought in the leadership aspect of it at your organization. Kunal? Yeah. yeah, sure. Uh, basically, uh, you know, as far as uh, leadership is concerned, you know, this world in itself, you know, should should be treated as, you know, a dynamic world than a static world like, you know, my fellow co-panelist Shalinda just spoke about. You know, just imagine yourself to be operating, uh, you know, in, in those times, 20 years or 15 years back when we used to have a Nokia uh, you know, uh, phone in our hands today, you know, operating with uh, those uh, phones when, you know, the world is totally into, uh, you know, smartphones, a lot of your information is today on your hand. And it's, you know, just imagine yourself working in, in those times. So, you know, those were times in which those things were important. And today is a time where, you know, uh, availability of the data at the time when the customer wants is, you know, also important. So, uh, you know, therefore, if you just relate it to the leadership also in an organization, you know, we cannot work, uh, you know, in, in, in the old uh, orthodox ways of uh, doing things. Today, you know, if you see the leadership uh, things, you know, there are, there are leaders who are expected to uh, 
uh, work in a more autocratic and uh, task oriented manner where you know you pick up areas you you know approach those areas even if you fail you know if, and your say do ratio is high you know you learn from those failures and then you know try and implement uh, you know the solution in a better manner uh, so uh, you know therefore the requirement of completing and taking ownership of tasks which are also in towards the end like shelinder mentioned you know are also uh, looked upon from a customer servicing perspective this is very important today if you ask about uh, me you know the way i operate in in my present organization or in my last 20 years you know customer focus is something that i will always keep in mind even if i am interacting to somebody you know i will ask him a question okay you are doing this uh, particular activity you tell me where what is it what is in it for my customer what how will he gain out of it so uh, leadership in today's time you know my strong belief is that you know uh, that you know it has to be a more customer oriented a more task oriented and at the same time you know it should be collaborative uh, and and has to be pe- uh, people which is when i say people i mean employee oriented as well you know uh, specifically like if if i want to throw a minute on on the way you know covid has uh, brought some bit of leadership change uh, in the way we operate you know is, is you know we, we were we were operating from work from home for a good uh, you know first quarter of the financial year 2021 uh, but at the same time you know we we tried and ensured that you know even if you are working from home it we should not take the liberty of taking the personal time of our employees during those uh, you know period you know we should we are we are very happy to do uh, calls and zoom calls and uh, you know all these conference call but we tried and ensured that you know somewhere down the line if we can close these particular interactions by the evening time which is the normal office time then at least you know we are not taking the liberty of of our employees being uh, available at their home and you know we don't treat that they are working from home so they are at a liberty of uh, you know sorry we are at a liberty of uh, using their personal time so that's one thing the other thing is like i mentioned earlier you know when when it comes to uh, uh, leadership you know the other point which is very important is communication so spreading the word across the organization and spreading the culture of awareness uh, of of the present or changing times you know is very important it it's a good phenomena to uh, say that you know it, it, cyber uh, security or information security is rise uh, you know uh, uh, controls are are being watched and you know people uh, are being un- under continuous watch from the network uh, you know but at the same time if if we are able to also educate the people and and spread the right level of awareness to the people you know my personal take is that you know there is a lot of information in cyber security risk that can be mitigated and therefore you know when we were interacting i remember when we were interacting in the first or the second uh, you know zoom calls with the, uh, within the leadership team and uh, with the employees thereafter you know one of our key area was a focus on uh, you know what are the kind of controls or uh, information security related controls that you know we are bringing in why are those restrictions brought in and you know what what uh, what is in it for the employee you know why does he have to go through you know one more level of uh, authentication when he's already you know when he was already coming to office and you know just plugging in his laptop in a la- on a lan office lan and he was able to get authenticated by himself but why now he has to go through another level of authentication so those communications were sent to the people and they were asked basically to you know accept and uh, also help us in spreading the awareness in our customers as well so just to summarize two points one basically it's important to respect the personal time of people you know as a leader you know, that is that is one thing that we ensure uh second is basically be more customer oriented uh and third and the final one is that, you know spread awareness across the organization so that people are included in your uh, you know in your journey rather than you know uh, they having their own ways and you basically are sitting in a corporate office or in a corporate environment very interesting uh, uh kunal uh, thanks for your views uh, yeah i fully agree that as a leader 
uh, at these times sensitization is very important uh, uh, to understand what the the you because what happens in a physical space is that you meet people every day you over a coffee or over a tea or over while you're sitting at lunch table a lot of things get exchanged that personal touch is lost and so you start somewhere uh, every team member now becomes uh, uh, another number in the whatsapp chat or or email id and uh, and uh, the the most challenging thing i think is for leaders is as i have seen in my own experience is that is somebody who has joined new uh, we had even though we are a small uh, team but uh, we had a couple of people joining us during this times and some of them i have not met uh, luckily i could connect with them because one of them was uh, both of them has worked in the organizations which i have worked in the past uh, one has worked in sdfc and one has worked in fullerton so i could connect with them and uh, or call and uh, understand their perspective of the whole business uh, yeah so uh, dominic uh, uh, you have been in the in the it space uh, for quite some time and uh, you guys are uh, have built few because you work both in the housing and affordable housing space and for you uh, personal touch with the customers and your field staff is very important as i understand because uh, it's a very critical segment it's it's not a it's not a one year two year kind of engagement we are talking about seven year 10 years kind of engagement and uh, suddenly you come to a situation where uh, out of the 10 items five items you can't do anymore because of restrictions uh, certain restrictions and in this times so how the leadership reacts or adapts to new situations is very important in your segment so please uh, uh, help us know how it has been your journey or your, your journey of art in this times uh, especially from the leadership perspective okay uh, so just to give you a brief uh, especially in our kind of segment like you know housing finance the leadership role starts off right from the boardroom okay from the boardroom up to the i have been very very mean if i say up to the uh, security guard who's guarding my data center or the person who's uh, taking care of so every person right from the boardroom up to the guard plays an equal amount of role in uh, whatever the kind of leadership qualities they have for example you know when i look at uh, my md it is mandatory that you know md or the ceo c00 level people should have the basic cyber security knowledge it was not like before you know you were dictate terms they should have a basic knowledge even at the board level also board members are supposed to be well educated on the because when you are sitting and discussing with them on the incident or the kind of activity or we are getting a budget approved they should be very well aware like what am i talking to them it should be like you know that goes out of above their head and all that you know so basic thing the leadership comes into picture that where every user is no more uh, like as fellow finance were saying that no it's not no more a static activity it's more of a dynamic every user takes the ownership of that particular scope what has been assigned to him and see that he delivers in a proper way i tomorrow i cannot say that you know dominic i can dominic cannot play a ceo role when it comes to an issues when there is a thing dominic has to play a ceo role there is no other alternative i can't say that i don't have a ceo i have to get it done so it it is it's it's a responsibility which is going to be taken by every user and second thing is uh, when you look at from the customer perspective like you know where uh, we have our sales staff sales staff which is always on the field hardly they get time to i mean hardly they get a chance to talk even talk to their uh, rsm or at the zonal level max to max they talk up to the sales manager level but today the quality of the leader is being changed in such a way that the md sometimes gets like you know we have something called um, town hall uh, where we connect all the especially we talk to the ro rms who are on the field the collection executive the call center agents the thing who are actually the uh, foot soldiers for us for the business to run so by talking to them the, the the complete concept is changed it's not like before like you know the senior level people never talks to the junior level it is that hierarchy level is gone so when you talk to them you try to understand at where what are their gaps it is already we only talk in the board in the conference room if this is what this is what target business plan this is what but when you talk to them we actually know it is not only their problems even from the technology perspective they are the right people to guide us how are you going to further digitize your ro your roadmap also gets changed because we talk at the very 3600 feet level but when you talk about the uh, ro level he has a better knowledge 
knowledge in a sense the practical experience the issues he faces so there also he also plays a kind of role as a leader and gives a feedback to us which has to be accepted by us we shouldn't take it as a personal thing no 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 it cannot be done a digitizer a cdo cannot say that no it cannot be done or the cio cannot say that or at the senior level we have to show the leadership qualities changes gradually as we start approaching the hierarchy level the onogram is good it's on the paper it's very good but practically on the ground it should be a single i always prefer to work on a lean architecture where we are in communication with the end user every end user whether it is rorm or with the customer you talk about when you talk about the fc today it is more the any business today is more customer centric how are you going to service the customer like shailendra was saying like when you release a product or when you come out with a solution how are you going to see that how you are going to see how this customer is going to accept it how is he going to get trained and how does how do you convince him to accept that there are certain customers they say we still go with the traditional way we want the brand setup but there are few customers who are happy with working on the br virtual brand setup which we have a virtual brand setup where we only give the technology to the user there is no physical brand for us there are certain so how are you going to deliver this and it should be more of customer focus it shouldn't be like like you know you build a technology and give it to them and they start uh, looking seeing stars in that it should be user friendly accessibility and you know you should understand so for all these things to happen the leadership plays or every user every user at the ground level or at the board level as a leader should play the responsibility and see that you know things are delivered on time properly it is delivered and it is accepted it is delivering is not only a duty it is accepted and again you have to monitor how is it going to be see the metrics we use what are the challenges people are facing and keep improving it so the leadership more plays uh, uh, like you know ground level activity today even the rorm plays a leader he he is a leader for us because end of the day he is the guy who is going to generate business and anything for that matter so even he is a leader so for me leadership is something like which should be linear structure everyone should communicate with each other understand their problems try giving a solution and you know where there is a limit we cross that and without compromising again i very clearly stick on to the compliance and the uh, uh threat factors looking at saying is safeguarding my data safeguarding my reputation financial loss and all those things these are the few things i look at from the leadership evolving these days so. yeah that's uh, that's a very uh, good insight uh, where you are talking about also about technology how it's get linked to the people and how people are involved uh, i just wanted to uh, remind all of us that uh, we need to bit speed up because we uh, have to finish this in next 20 minutes so uh, the uh, the next uh, i think uh, uh, while all this is uh, uh, technology is a great thing and uh, while like shalendra was saying that there are applications which fit your budget and uh, uh, so uh, but uh, you know uh, in terms of tech spend i read somewhere that the uh, the us banks uh, I, I, these are not uh, very authentic numbers but this is just discussion number that has come across with Uh, one of my friends who is uh, is in the fintech sector, and uh, he, he mentioned that U.S. banks spend around 10 to 12 percent of their revenues on on tech, and while uh, while uh, China, which is has top five banks in uh, in globally, has spends just two percent, and while Indian banks are close to about 0.03 to 0.1 percent in terms of tech spend. So. now uh, it would be interesting also for us to uh, look at you know what is the uh, how the budgetary impacts these uh, new changes will have in terms of uh, so uh, dominic uh, since you you are the person who must be sitting on lot of uh, uh, you know vendor proposals rfps etc so it will be we'll start with you to understand again uh, how do you think the uh, the impacts are happening on on the budgets or due to this digital transformation in the current times do you think it will increase or actually the business cost will reduce and so maybe in, in those parameters you can quickly give us a yeah so there are two things to this uh, technically speaking uh, budget is always a challenge getting approved when it comes to it whether it is cyber security or you know upgradation to what of it but gradually it is getting evolved post covid and all that and with kind of um, regulations coming in from the regulator saying that it is mandatory you have to have this and all that there are uh, it's gradually increasing before budget was never part of the business plan now what is it happening is it budget is linked to the business plan very clearly says that you know these these things are very important it has to without this things cannot go ahead if you are looking at digital as your 
growth business growth then you should have this uh, there should be a dedicated budget given to it systems as well as cyber security it shouldn't be like you know you give it a it budget is so much you try sharing it in that it's not the way that's not going to work now this things are changed it is no more the like you know business is given very very important yes business is given important but at the same time we as a housing finance company we are very very clear in that you know i to be very frank i had made it very clear one in one of the board meeting that you know if you are linking business with my technology then obviously my budget should be at this x value then only we can make things otherwise you know going forward it will be very very difficult for us to get an approval for every every small small thing coming up in this way in that way we are doing it but uh, again budget is one part we get a budget approved but evaluating the products and seeing how these products are going to be successful and deploying this product that's always be a challenge for us evaluating the vendors because we get today every vendor I mean, sorry every vendor has got a new solution it's just a copy of the solution in a different name it is given to us it is not that see end of the day antivirus sofos does what it has to do semantic also does it has what it has to do but only thing you are extending it in such a like today we are talking about xdr technology edr technology i mean what is xdr technology is nothing it's the same thing this level as encryption antivirus uh, controlling a system safeguarding a system that's all there's nothing only thing the words now you, how are you going to break, read between these words and see that yes this product is going to be suitable for me and if if you're buying that particular product how is that going to help you in a long run it should be a product should be you buy it for one year and after a second year the company winds up for example i'll tell you we we implement there was a lot of pressure on us to cut down on the phishing and uh, veiling issues by implementing dmark we implemented dmark for three months we were able to do a complete thorough check up and today we i don't feel i don't even get a single phishing attacks in last two months after it's been six months last four months we there was issues i mean uh, first two months we had a lot of things happening but in the last two months i don't see any kind of see now dmark is for me dmark solution is just a monitoring tool it is no more a threat for me because it is safeguarding my solution it is safeguarding my incoming and outgoing bill so this this is there are certain things which you got to be very very clear you should understand what you need for your business and that's again when i talk to the board board level should also be flexible in understanding the requirements of it and pushing it in way i would always recommend you know one technology person experienced person should always be part of the strategic committee or the board because it the wavelength matches when a cio or a cso or is talking to them that is that is very important these are my takes for this yeah yeah thanks uh, dominic uh, uh, i think uh, uh the next uh, little extension of this uh, topic could be that uh, both uh, aditya billa group and uh, hinduja are uh, uh, have already must be having a, a co corporate level cyber strategy uh, and uh, when we are talking about such big uh, large uh, business groups uh, they uh, both you must be having a uh, particular budgetary allocation and uh, so is there any shift in that uh, uh, shalendra uh, uh, then we'll go to kunal uh, to understand like what dominic was saying uh, putting a person specifically on the board because so much things will move on the tech side and uh, the budgets have to be explained every time a new spending has to be done yeah so the fight continues uh, it is not easy uh, and uh, uh, the thing is uh, how well do you explain uh, of a high impact or a high risk whose probability could be very low uh, just because a covid event has happened doesn't mean you will be uh, impacted by a cyber event or just because someone else in the industry has happened uh, because the question would be that what are your existing controls and your existing tools Uh, therefore because obviously you would have been on some evolution path uh, so it is thing to each company how well do you uh, customize your negotiation your discussions uh, however uh, uh, large groups uh, who have long term business interest or uh, do uh, definitely look at it boards also look at it it is also very important how do you uh, explain to the board because the board members also need to have some level of training or understanding Uh, around it. and uh, i think it is up to how well do you explain how well do you uh, as i said earlier earn your seat at the uh, table uh, no one will come and give budgets to you on a platter unless something has really come and impacted you because of which you are taking uh, reactive uh, steps and i think we are speaking more of proactive steps 
also you need to be cognizant of how well do you use funds you can spend all the tools all the budgets you want but still not get anything out of it or you could be reasonable and manage well so i think uh, uh, the right balance is something which each one needs to uh, uh, find across but yeah definitely uh, uh, see the other thing is a lot of businesses have come under cost pressures because Correct. the sales have got affected in covid times and uh, asking for a budget when the whole organization could be reducing budgets may not be in the right direction uh, so how well do you manage within your budgets i think prioritization is very important uh using your money at the right places is very important and uh, i think uh, if you look at it stand alone as cyber security maybe you might not get it but if you look at it as a prioritization or as a key uh, important item for the organization within budgets then definitely uh, you will be up there so so i think each organization will have i may not be able to share my personal uh, or or our organization journey but mm-hmm. yeah i can say that large organizations uh, do uh, take care you need to uh, use this opportunity to predict of the future do some level of joint crystal ball gazing together with the team so that they also understand the importance of it mm-hmm. so punal uh, quick views from you also please yeah i remember uh, you know taking taking the lead from uh, uh, shailendra and dominate you know it it's it's not an easy journey and i remember a uh, incident uh, you know which happened uh, now i can say in 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 good spirit uh, you know but at that point of time it was really you know a challenge in front of us so we were implementing in one of uh, my previous organization uh, an soc solution service operation center security operation center and you know when we were suggesting solution somebody asked me in the leadership team what is the cost benefit analysis of this mm-hmm. and for a moment i got zapped that you know how do i how do i create a cost benefit analysis for uh, you know a security operation it's just asking you know whether you want to deploy security to your home whether you want to deploy security to your what is the cost benefit analysis it's a, if you don't deploy it it's a existence of yourself and versus your non existence so you know it's it's difficult to uh, you know give cgs on some of these areas you know and i like uh, shailendra rightly said it's a high impact and uh, you know uh, unknown probability low or uh, you know not low is also something that you know it's a very difficult statement for uh, me as a risk officer to make because you know you never know what can happen when and if you go by past data you know the probability has never been there but uh, you know when can it happen it can happen any time and the impact will be you know surely high at the same time you know when it comes to uh, cyber security budgets you know we largely focus on uh, five areas of investment which is you know like i mentioned in my previous uh, communication uh, multi factor authentication because you know now increasingly like uh we have started from uh, you know working from home and people are operating from outside of uh, the office in uh, you know infrastructure then you know uh, one area of in, uh, uh, which has seen an increase in investment is the multi factor authentication uh there there is always been you know the second area being the bd being the uh, end device protection which is always been an area where uh, you know we we always get a heavy amount of uh, you know budgeting over there and you know we 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 kind of uh, you know have not changed that much uh, the third area being you know anti phishing tools because you know that's that's uh, you know again an area where what you've done is you've again increase the uh, budget over there you know thinking uh, from a perspective that you know the uh, uh, dependence on the new data uh, inclusive uh, solutions which are which are coming in and you know therefore you know these are areas where uh, you know uh, investment uh, should be there uh, the third area which i would uh, suggest uh, sorry the fourth area which i would suggest is you know uh, uh, vpn uh, you know because uh, you know creating those virtual uh, private network and you know operating from those uh, you know could be a need of the r you never know about the future uh and uh, last but not the least is is an area where uh, you know uh is is the entire end user awareness campaign 
that is one point that you know you might be uh, noticing that i'm repeating time and again in all, in all my communication because so that is one area that we have continuously focused upon and uh, you know we have seen people people uh, actually being the ambassador for communicating the right uh, uh, you know information to the right uh, people and you know the access to information can be controlled if people people have uh, you know their uh, control over the knowledge of information security great yeah uh, uh, i think that is uh, uh, at an organizational level uh, uh, you know acceptance and organization level education of cyber security is also i think is a very important point because uh, not long ago maybe couple of decades ago uh, when uh, the whole concept of credit officers and risk officers was introduced in the banking system you know, with a lot of large private banks coming into the market uh, there was a brief uh, discussion around is there a need for a separate cost centers in terms of credit <laughs> so uh, and uh, i have been uh, part of some of those discussions uh, in my journey in banking where uh, where organizations felt that the business guy himself can cover the uh, the risk part so uh, well that's 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 i think that's the uh, change part uh, uh, so i think we have come to towards the end of our discussion uh, very uh, uh, very fruitful and uh, i think insightful discussion between all the industry experts from the risk side so i thought i quickly we can sum up uh, just uh, uh, in, two, in two to three lines uh, whatever uh, what is the what is our uh, you know the Uh, i think we have covered most of it but maybe we can just sum up as to what are the measures or you know some of the uh, plans that we have for in coming years on uh, starting in 2021 in immediately on the cyber risk management thing and also uh, uh, what, what as part of the plan how do we also plan to cover the legislation uh, legislations that are coming up in, the, in these because There's a lengthy bit of legislations that are coming now from the regulators and also from the government. So, uh, Dominic, we can start with you again and uh, just quickly uh, sum it up with, uh, in two to three sentences. Plan and uh, 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 so for me, uh, uh, new risk. There's nothing as new risk. The same risk which is evolving in a different different format for me. Okay, and uh, for, for second thing is. identifying the right tools and deploying it at the right point of time and after deployment what is the measures we are going to take how are you going to monitor these tools is it successful in implementing and what is the like you know so you can't do a uh, cost benefit analysis but at least the product what you implemented we can always find out and see that you know is this been correctly been implemented is the risk been controlled at what level of risk has been controlled and what are the para what are the parameters which can always be reworked and restructured again and again so risk is always there risk comes in a different different format which is uh, we cannot predict those risk you know it can be from a, a, a internal employee external employee anything for that matter so technology deployment is more of uh, how you understand what you need and second thing is protection of data when you look at uh, data protection plays a very very important role because today it is a regulatory requirement you are as a uh, process owner we are responsible for owning the data whether you are a, a ro rm or an individual user or at the senior most level every user plays a equal role cyber security awareness should be there and awareness on how you protect your data where there is a certain amount of confidentiality to be maintained among the users and see what has to be shared what not has to be shared and any kind of incidents to be immediately reported to the concerned authority on time so that you know damages can be controlled these are the few things which i look at it from the three point of view or from my business the most generically that's my view Oh uh, great, uh, Shalin, your uh, quick uh, take on this, on the plan and the uh, risks. A uh, plan would be in terms of. Uh, I'm sorry, I just. Uh, in terms of the overall cyber management uh, for coming years, uh, what's the? Yeah. Plan? So uh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I got you. So I think. Uh, uh, I think uh, as I said earlier, uh, uh, this is the best time to get into a 2.0. Uh, if you are at 1.0 in terms of uh, cyber management, and uh, really forecast or think of where technology and business operating models would be a few years down the line, 
and for all you know uh, there could be a kodak moment for your business uh, in terms of if it doesn't evolve uh, in line with how the ecosystem is evolving and you could have fintech you could have someone else uh, challenging uh, the traditional uh, models so i think that is more important and along with that if you have a good vision of that you could have a good vision of how your cyber security model could be because i think uh, that model can play a very good role uh, as i say offer of the way uh, brakes play a, a role in a formula 1 uh, racing car that you can really drive very fast knowing at the back of your mind that the brakes are there and uh, similarly uh, and the organization also. sorry and they have to work also <laughs> they have to work hopefully you don't need to use them but they mm-hmm. they are particular purpose and i am assuming they yeah so they have to be very pertinent and very relevant so they have to work uh, and uh, i think uh, so so you can use your cyber security model to enable the organization to take more risk to get into more digital models uh, to be more agile and that is very difficult for traditional uh, bureaucratic fat organizations to uh, turn or detour along the way uh, I, i think you can play your small role in the whole thing uh, and it can become an embedded part of the overall uh, strategy of a market yeah uh, kunal uh, your quick views on this on the on on the uh, first the risk and then the plans uh, on the overall cyber management yeah so uh, you know uh, like we have covered in the session earlier you know security has proven to be the foundation of uh, you know the entire digital transformation journey so you know what what it brings on the table is you know diverse set of data which you know also comes along with diverse kind of threats to the associated with those uh, data set you know no longer uh, we are in the age that you know we are only protecting or uh, you know holding x level of data of a, of an individual today you know uh, there are so many solutions which are available in the market you know there are so many api connects that are possible today that you know which which Uh, all these apis bring different kinds of data which is available in the market today you know, as a responsible lender uh, and a responsible custodian of the customer data you know we need to be very very clear of what access do we need to take and you know at the same time we're taking an access you know a proper threat intelligence uh, surveillance system should be there so that you know we are able to protect somebody's uh, personal information uh, so so th- that is one uh the second thing is you know uh, they, they, there is when when we come to a digital transformation age you know what is very important is continuity of business so you know therefore uh, you know one needs to have proper uh, controls and uh, you know investments in the place so that the business is able to continue and you know our customers and our employees as well as you know our processes do not see a restriction in the continuation of business and last point being you know the entire uh, emphasis or uh, you know dependence on the cloud uh, 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 you know services and therefore you know uh, putting the right amount of controls on the cloud services you know and monitoring those services because now the data is not in our control it is actually uh, sitting in a uh, in a cloud server you know which which for which you know lot of us we take services of some uh, known and uh, you know reliable, reliable brand but at the same time you know it's not only choosing the reliable brand it's also to have your own controls to monitor you know the cloud services that we we are using yeah that's that's uh, i think uh, that was a wonderful discussion i think uh, all of us can agree on that we covered almost uh, all aspects uh, like from uh, the leadership the budgetary allocation business continuity the risks and uh, and in a small bit of legislation also so you already uh, in the interest of time we already over short time by 3 minutes and uh, i hate doing that so uh, thanks everyone for taking time out uh, thanks so much for coming on for the discussion so i will end the session now thank you thank you so much thank you everyone thank you 
Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Srihari Adarti, co-founder and chief risk officer, Funds Corner. Thank you so much for moderating this session, sir. I also thank Mr. Shailendra Kothavle, uh, chief risk and compliance officer at Aditya Birla Group, Mr. Dominic Vijay Kumar, deputy vice president and head IT and security at Art Housing Finance India Limited, and I thank Mr. Kunal Kathpal, chief risk officer, Hinduja Leyland Finance Limited. Thank everyone. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Moderator and uh, thanks all the audience for uh, i hope you must have attended uh, the entire session and i would uh, love to inform you all that if you have any questions please uh, you may please uh, visit the virtual our, our virtual platform and you can ask it virtually and our experts will be happy to answer these questions thank you so much everyone we are breaking here for the networking uh, i again request everyone to visit the expo area we will again assemble for the next panel discussion after the break thank you so much